welcome to my channel i hope you're all doing very well i really hope that you are like i hope you're doing much better than i am because i have had an absolutely rotten day <laughs> It has been the worst 24 hours ever. But yes, the 96th Academy Awards happened last night and as is tradition on my channel, we're gonna be going through my reaction, thoughts and feelings to the ceremony, the winners, the losers, and everything else in between. So if you guys enjoy my awards coverage, then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up to let me and YouTube know. Also be sure to check out my All Things Awards awards season playlist on my channel where you can check out all of my awards coverage over the last what four or five years like I've been doing this for a while now so you'd think I'd know better anyway <laughs> we'll get into it before we do last piece of homework is as always if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next. Now without further ado guys, let's get into my thoughts and reactions and feelings and dismay over the 96th Academy Awards. So first off, we're gonna dive into my thoughts on the ceremony itself. And I have to say right up front, I actually wasn't planning on watching this year's ceremony at all. <laughs> I was literally so over award season. That would be my first point. Award season this year feels like it went on for decades. Like, is it just me or did this award season feel longer than ever? And I feel like it's partially because so many of the front runners this award season came out earlier in the year. Like, we've been talking about Barbenheimer for what, 17 years now? <laughs> So it just feels like it went on for so much longer than it actually did. But maybe it's also because I'm a bit of a hater. Like maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's a combination of the two things. We'll get into, we'll get into my hating sensibilities in a second. Don't you even worry about it. It was a terrible night for me last night. But anyways, overall, I was pretty sick of awards season. I was kind of over seeing these Hollywood folks pat themselves on the back. Even though I do love film, like I do love cinema. I do love television, but something about it just rubbed me the wrong way this year. Maybe it's because of the other stuff going on in the world. I just didn't feel like indulging Hollywood in its self-indulgences this time around. So yeah, I had already decided that I wasn't going to check out the 96th Academy Awards, especially because here in the UK, one, they air really, really late at night on a Sunday. At the very least, if it was on a Saturday, it would be okay. But on a Sunday, when people have work the next day, boo, hate that. And two, usually the Academy Awards are only exclusively available on a streaming platform called Now TV which have different packages. Now TV is so unnecessarily confusing but every year in order to watch the Academy Awards I would get a subscription to Now TV for just one single month so I could check out the ceremony and it would cost me like 10 quid. 10 quid just to watch this damn show okay just to be filled with disappointment and high blood pressure. But this year it just so happens that the broadcasting contracts for the Oscars ended up going to ITV and that is a free channel that millions more people have access to it probably helped a ton with the viewership although I don't know how helpful the viewership was considering I didn't get any ads during my broadcast I don't know about you guys fellow UK people chime in down in the comments below but I didn't get any ads throughout the Oscars I just got Jonathan Ross yapping away at nothing yapping away about absolutely nothing at all because he had no idea what was going on um with a crowd of people who equally were clueless uh, but i didn't actually get any ads so i was wondering what the point of putting it on ITV to get a larger audience actually was considering they didn't quite capitalize on that as much as they could have but anyways I'm not complaining too much and uh, my point is that because it was available on ITV for free this time around and also because they actually started the telecast one hour earlier I decided to tap in to see what was going on for the 96th Academy Awards and honestly 
overall, I was pleasantly surprised by how much of a good time I had. I do think there were some key highlights that made it a nice watch for a Sunday night, too late on a Sunday night, but still a little bit earlier than usual. Um, and I think there were enough memorable moments that will probably carry through Oscar history. So let's dive into some of those, shall we? The first thing that I really liked about last night's Oscar ceremony was when they brought out the uh, previous winners in the acting categories in order to announce the this year's nominees. I thought that was a really fun element. We've kind of seen that be done before. It's not particularly new, um, but I think the fact that they had like a whole panel of these uh, previous actors who had won in those categories kind of standing there like gods and goddesses, right? And then instead of uh, having the usual clips of each performance, uh, they instead had these actors um, reading out these soliloquies kind of describing the performances and praising their fellow actors. It felt very personal, uh, which I think was uh, pretty special and unique. So overall, I really liked that new element. I don't know how other viewers would have received it, especially if you don't follow award season as rigorously as we do. I think in that case, it probably would have been better to have the little clips playing to show people what the performances were and why these actors were nominated because most general audiences wouldn't have seen most of the nominated uh, performances. But I think for those of us who have been following award season pretty closely and have watched most of the nominated films, I think it was a nice new element to include. And I think it would have been more than welcome from the attendees of these award ceremonies as well, who have had to sit through the same old clips with the same old monologues for months now. Although I will say as great as this new feature was for this ceremony, there was definitely some inconsistencies when it came to the presenters. <laughs> I definitely think there were some presenters that were much better than others and some standouts to me were definitely Lupita Nyong'o. Lupita Nyong'o was amazing as she said her piece about uh, Divine Joy Randolph, like she absolutely killed it. And the fact that they were color coordinated was amazing. It was likely a coincidence, but it just looked absolutely incredible when Divine Joy Randolph got up to accept her award. We will discuss the awards in a second. Some other standout presenters included Regina King, Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage had one of the biggest laughs from me of the entire night when he was talking about Paul Giamatti and his fake eye and how he would absolutely have done the same thing. <laughs> I was like, Nicolas Cage, you icon. We also got Christoph Waltz talking about Ryan Gosling's performance and there wasn't anything particularly standout about his piece. What really struck me is just how much of a natural public speaker he was because shocking as it might seem, some of these actors and actresses, despite the fact that they're great on screen with all of the editing and all of the directing and whatnot, some of them are terrible public speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are actually terrible public speakers, which honestly gags me every time. But Christoph Waltz standing there on the stage, it felt like it was just like a natural conversation that he was having. The way that he delivered that soliloquy was absolutely perfect. You couldn't even tell that he was reading off of a teleprompter. And the same thing could be said for Ben Kingsley, who introduced Killian Murphy as a nominee for Best Actor. Uh, he had a lot of like gravitas in his voice. Like I was kind of dumbfounded. I was like, oh my God, Ben Kingsley. He delivered his part with such grace and gravitas, like he really commanded the attention of the room. I was like, damn, this is an excellent pairing. <laughs> this is an amazing pairing to have. And also speaking of great pairings, it wasn't lost on me that we got quite a few in this little segment as well, uh, with Emma Stone being introduced uh, by Sally Field, who portrayed Aunt May in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. And she was, of course, Gwen Stacy. And we even got the reunion of Tony Stark and Justin Hammer as Sam Rockwell introduced RDJ for his category last night. So again, I thought that was a great idea. I think the segment worked really well overall and I would like to see them use it in future ceremonies as well. I don't think they can do it every year because like you're going to run out of people. <laughs> you're going to run out of people surely. Um, but once in a while, maybe for the 100th Academy Awards, they could definitely repeat this. It was a success. Now another standout moment for me last night was, I mean, we can't go a second longer without discussing this. 
I'm just Ken. <laughs> I'm just guys. Watching that live last night was honestly it made all of the shenanigans, okay, all of the headache worth it because I think Ryan Gosling knocked his performance of I'm Just Ken, his live debut of this song out of the freaking park. Why on earth did Ryan Gosling, acclaimed actor Ryan Gosling, have more stage presence than half of the musical artists that we have running around these streets these days? Why did he, why did he, in, in a joking way mind you, why did he kill his performance way better than I have seen half of the extremely popular and musical talents running around? It literally gagged me, it literally floored me because I thought it was just going to be a little joke, a little gag, and then the production value started amping up and also first of all his performance had a longer run time in comparison to other performances of best song and honestly that was partially unfair they gave Billie Eilish and Ryan Gosling double the time as everyone else which is a bit peak but that added time allowed for a really nice ramp up in his performance he starts off sitting behind Margot Robbie with the the cowboy hat and then things just go crazy from there she's laughing her ass off he's getting up on stage singing live and sounding good why does he sound better than half of the male artists that we have running around these streets these days what is going on okay mark ronson is there wearing pink like it's just a vibe and then we get into the gentleman prefer blondes kind of reference that they have going on with him and it's just flawlessly executed that performance was definitely the biggest highlight of the night and as i said earlier i do think this is a moment an oscar moment that will stand the test of of time so like good on Ryan Gosling honestly because even though he lost out on the Oscar itself he definitely won in terms of public opinion okay in terms of the night and in terms of his performance and that wasn't even the only shining moment that Ryan Gosling had because he also went up on stage with Emily Blunt to introduce another category I can't remember which category it was but they also had some fun banter and when it comes to actors pairing up to present an award and they're usually paired up to promote their upcoming projects together I think it's a mixed bag sometimes you can have a pairing that just does not work at all and sometimes the pair of actors can just have great on-screen chemistry immediately you're like oh I do want to see them together actually as soon as possible and for instance I think that was the case with Kate McKinnon and America Ferreira I don't know if they have an upcoming project together or if it was just a Barbie thing but they were great together they had great chemistry but also we had Ryan Gosling with Emily Blunt because I was a bit sour on Emily Blunt I was like she doesn't deserve to be nominated for an Oscar which is still true uh, but after her little banter with Ryan Gosling I was like you know what Emily maybe we can keep you maybe you can stick around <laughs> Maybe you can stick around. Maybe you're not as bad as I thought you were. Kind of, sort of. I was still a bit annoyed that she was there taking another actor's place, but I did like the exchange that she had, even though, even though she did have that one sassy line. She went right for the gut where she was like, oh, everyone was talking about Barbenheimer, 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 but in the end, looks like it wasn't the rivalry that everyone thought, at least considering awards season. <laughs> We're all gagged. I was like, you guys, that's just a little bit. Not gonna lie, Emily Blunt. But Ryan Gosling also had that funny rebuttal where he was like, there's a reason why it's called Barbenheimer, okay? And it's because Oppenheimer was riding off the coattails of Barbie. Like that, that was fun. All of that was really, really great. And so yeah, just another standout moment for Ryan Gosling. And another VIP for the night. How can I forget? How can I not mention Messi? <laughs> Messi, the most iconic dog, the most iconic creature. He is, of course, the dog from Anatomy of a Fall, a star, a superstar. A few days ago, there was panic, okay? There was panic that was spread across the globe as we found out that certain people in Hollywood didn't want Messi attending the Oscars for whatever reason, and people campaigned. People were like, absolutely not, that can't happen. But in the end, he ended up coming. <laughs> Messi ended up gracing the Oscar attendees with his presence and we were all the better for it. But aside from the highlights of the ceremony, I also wanted to touch very quickly on the host, which was once again the ABC workman, Jimmy Kimmel. Now at this point, I don't know what more to say when it comes to these award ceremony hosts. Like I've, I've said this many, many times. Either you give us a show or you leave. Quite frankly, I'm good with having no hosts if the host isn't gonna give me some razzle-dazzle. Like, 
Christ isn't gonna give me showmanship I, I genuinely just don't see the point and Jimmy Kimmel is just so pedestrian that there's nothing special about him as a host it really is so bizarre that he keeps getting hired to do the bare minimum during these awards ceremonies because I actually think that getting a good juicy awards host uh, could even elevate the standing of the ceremony overall although the Oscars are considered very high standing but you can always there's always room for improvement but with Jimmy Kimmel where is the improvement huh because it's been years and I haven't seen any for the most part I found his jokes to be really jarring and annoying there were the typical jokes of films being too long which yeah I agree with but when it's coming out of Jimmy Kimmel's mouth I don't appreciate it and also the joke about animation I, that pisses me off every single year you guys know how I feel about animation many of you will know that I'm ride or die for animation as a medium I think it's a phenomenal medium that has endless possibilities and I'm sick and tired of seeing these hosts and presenters joke about the uh, best animated feature and shorts categories like oh did you get your kids to vote for this one because you're not allowed it's so juvenile and patronizing and it's not even a fresh take it's not even new like that joke has been done a million times and leave it in the gutter for god's sake and not to mention it's disrespectful as hell honestly it pissed me off so much when these presenters make fun of animation and belittle it in that way because the, these lot could never these lot quite literally could never i will say though as much as i disparage jimmy kimmel's performance as the host last night i did like the fact that he highlighted the role of the strikes last year and he didn't just make a snide little remark that disappeared into the ether like he properly talked about it for a minute there and really highlighted the contributions of the writers and actors that went on strike and got better deals for everyone and he also made a snide little remark about the director's guild okay which immediately folded to the studios last year they didn't bother going on strike and so I really appreciated that you know in these other awards ceremonies they haven't even mentioned the strikes too much they try to avoid being as political as possible on various accounts but at least this time around Jimmy addressed the matter directly and even took the chance to thank the teamsters working on the award ceremony last night but still I think Jimmy Kimmel needs to be retired as Oscar host and and it just so happened <laughs> It just so happened I have stumbled across the most amazing CV for the person who should replace him and that is John Mulaney. John Mulaney in his little three minute stand up bit that he had last night was more entertaining than Jimmy Kimmel was for the entirety of the four hour show. So give John Mulaney the job immediately because it seems as though he has far more charisma and stage presence than Jimmy Kimmel does. But okay so now that we have discussed the ceremony and the host it's time to get into the winners and the losers and the snubs and controversies Ooh. <laughs> okay starting us off with the big winner of the night which was Oppenheimer <laughs> listen listen first of all I like the film I like the I like the film. For my regular viewers, I hope you guys had me in your thoughts last night because you likely would have known that it would have been one of the worst nights of my life. <laughs> As a professional Christopher Nolan hater, last night was just almost unbearable, which is why I was clinging on to the bright spots like Ryan Gosling, okay, and you know, Lupita Nyong'o, like the <laughs> great moments for me because seeing Christopher Nolan win so much all at once was painful even though I saw it coming even though I already knew it was gonna happen uh, it was tough <laughs> it was tough for me so yeah let's go through the wins shall we to be honest I actually thought that Oppenheimer would be going home with a few more awards than it actually did um the Oscars were a bit more uh, democratic when it came to spreading out the awards this year especially the technical awards which ended up being eaten up by poor things we'll discuss in a second but of course Oppenheimer ended up taking home most of the major awards including best actor the only award that I was happy about <laughs> the only one I was talking about best actor for Killian Murphy absolutely absolutely are you kidding me oh the happiness and joy and that was also the reason why I stayed up until 2 a.m on a Sunday night to watch this goddamn thing because I was like listen I'm already knee deep into the ceremony I can't go to sleep before seeing my guy 
<laughs> before seeing my Irishman, Killian Murphy, pick up that Oscar. So I was like, let's stick it out, okay? We are gonna sit through this. But unfortunately, unfortunately, I also had to sit through Christopher Nolan winning Best Director, which killed me. I was literally like, oh. <laughs> I was literally like, this is the worst moment ever. No, 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 I, I wasn't too affected. I wasn't actually bubbling with rage. <laughs> now those of you who are new around here might be super confused and flummoxed and befuddled by my reaction to Christopher Nolan winning. If that's the case then we don't have time to go through the complicated history. Just check out my review of Oppenheimer. Just check out my review of Oppenheimer and also my review of Napoleon if you really want to get down in the, in the nitty gritty of things. Oppenheimer of course also took home the award for best supporting actor with Robert Downey Jr picking up his very first Oscar after having been nominated three times oh and I almost forgot there was that awkward moment where Jimmy Kimmel was making these inappropriate jokes about RDJ's you know past with you know struggling with addiction and jail and all of that and I thought that was really unfair and unnecessary especially because he didn't make such personal jabs at anyone else so it felt really targeted and very insensitive to people who have struggled through addiction many of whom are probably in that room so like read the room Jimmy but yeah I thought those jokes were out of bounds and I really didn't appreciate them even though I myself am not the biggest RDJ fan and last night made me even less of a fan of the man <laughs> than I already was. My issue with RDJ uh, being a front runner for this category was that I just didn't feel like his performance in Oppenheimer was transformative enough. I felt like he was playing a different flavour of RDJ, the same character that he always plays. But imagine my horror, imagine, <laughs> imagine my frustration and disgust when the Best Supporting Actor Award Award is presented and Kei Hoi Kwan picks up the envelope and reads out RDJ's name with such glee mind you oh he's such an amazing oh he's so great uh, but then RDJ comes up on stage grabs the Oscar from Kei Hoi Kwan ignoring the envelope and just kind of swaggers out there doing his Tony Stark thing that pissed me the hell off that pissed me the hell off it made him seem so unlikable so disingenuous so smug like I said I'm already over these celebrities at this point so that little performance that he did on stage was just really yucky to me but then you contrast that against Killian Murphy going on stage and I'm not just saying this as a fan girl but like the facts are there watch the videos Killian Murphy goes up on stage and shakes each and every one of the presenters hands showing them his full respect and admiration looking them dead in the eyes with his piercing blue eyes then grabs the Oscar and then says his speech where he's just like flabbergasted and shocked and happy and also takes a moment to make a vague statement about peacemakers whilst not wearing a red badge <laughs> but, but ultimately putting aside my one-sided beef with Christopher Nolan I do think that most of the Oppenheimer wins were genuinely deserved I was really happy to see Ludwig Göransson win his second Oscar for the best score because he I've said this before but I'll say it again Ludwig Göransson is going to be the next Hans Zimmer okay he is such an incredible uh, musical composer his work is I mean it just speaks for himself the Mandalorian Black Panther Oppenheimer Tenet one of the few good things about Tenet he even produced Redbone by Childish Gambino like the list just goes on he is such a talented musician and the fact that he highlighted his wife who is a violinist and she played the violin on the score it was really touching and endearing and just think about how talented their kids are probably gonna be oh my goodness generational talent being passed on okay that's enough Oppenheimer talk for now and forever because I've been hearing about this film for 15 years and I'm sick and tired at this point okay I've already moved on I've already moved on to Doom <laughs> I'm in Dune part two mode I don't want to hear no Christopher Nolan I'm writing for Denis but now it's time to discuss it's time to discuss the thievery of poor things poor things were stealing left right and center poor things <laughs> was stealing in the middle of the night just thieving robbing everyone blind let's start off first of all with emma stone winning best actress over lily gladstone i uh, this is so complicated because if you watched my nominations reaction video you'll know that i was actually in the minority <laughs> i was actually in the minority not just the ethnic minority but in the minority in terms of opinion uh where i whispered whispered into the ether 
that I personally thought that Lily Gladstone had more of a supporting role in Killers of the Flower Moon and because of that I actually was rooting for Emma Stone because I thought that she was the best genuine lead actress in the nominees list. I feel bad for saying that now considering what happened but yeah you can roll the tape I did I did warn you. <laughs> I did warn you guys, I did try to tell you that Martin Scorsese didn't write Lily Gladstone enough of a chunky role for her to be a strong contender for lead actress and if he really wanted to push her in that way then he should have made her the main character. Like I did try to say that and I've always said that she was absolutely brilliant in that film but it doesn't negate the fact that she literally disappears in the second half. Like she's barely in it, she doesn't have a massive presence in it. And even in terms of supporting characters I would say Robert De Niro even had a bigger role in comparison to Lily Gladstone and I think that's an oversight by Scorsese because he centered the story on the white men instead of on the Native American people like that's on Scorsese I don't know what to tell you it's not my fault sorry sorry it's not my fault but that is on Scorsese whereas if you watch Poor Things which I since have then there is no denying there is no dispute over who the lead character is in that film it's Emma Stone like it's absolutely about Bella Baxter and not to mentioned she genuinely knocked her performance out of the park like she's actually so good in that film it's kind of crazy seeing the evolution of the character the way that she grows up right in front of our eyes is is kind of amazing considering she's a grown woman with the brain of a grown woman in real life uh, although you wouldn't know it considering <laughs> considering how crazy mad she was acting last night with her dress ripping and all of that but she was genuinely flabbergasted by the fact that she won and um, I think it was a, a genuine shock by the way all those actors who pretend to be shocked that they won like oh this is such a surprise and then they bring out a speech <laughs> they bring out a whole speech and they're perfectly prepared for the win yeah that's not genuine surprise genuine surprise looks like whatever the hell was going on with Emma Stone last night. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so sorry to those of you who are riding at dawn for Lily Gladstone. I also thought she was brilliant in Killers of the Flower Moon. And more than anything, I wanted the win uh, for her because of what it represented for her community, for her people, the Native American people. Like I just wanted that to be another great achievement in Oscar history. But to be honest, once again, I placed a lot of blame on Martin Scorsese and his co-writer. Uh, for centering his story on the white men instead of on the Native American people to give them juicier roles so that they would be up for these nominations. And unfortunately, last night, Lily Gladstone had to pay the price for Martin Scorsese's decisions when it came to the narrative of that film. So I personally think that there's a really important lesson to learn here, which is that it's all well and good having this incredible, powerful representation of these underrepresented groups. It's great to have them as supporting characters and you know to build a world around them but if you really want to push these characters forward when it comes to award season or even just their presence in film history I think it's important to write good roles for these characters to really think about their character arcs to think about their presence in the film and then you get good actors to do justice to that role and that can mind guarantees you some gold and I think that's what happened with Emma Stone and I would have loved to have seen that with Lily Gladstone in Killers of the Flower Moon as well. But Lily Gladstone wasn't the only one who was robbed by poor things last night <laughs> because we also had some other robberies amongst the technical categories of the Oscars. Any of us or at least I believed that Barbie would end up sweeping at the very least the technical categories like best costume and best production design but those Oscars ended up in the hands of the Poor Things gang, which honestly, I was flabbergasted by. Now, to be fair, I have seen Poor Things, I saw it in cinemas, and I admit it is a beautiful <laughs> beautiful film great production design whatever the costumes are great although I do think there is an overuse of leg of mutton sleeves like we could have mixed it up with the sleeve department like but still I think it was such a shame that Barbie didn't end up taking home the award for production design and costume because I genuinely thought it was a lock uh, but poor things just kind of swept in there and there seemed to be a lot of Barbie animosity Barbie didn't even take home best adapted screenplay which it shouldn't have even been 
been nominated for because it wasn't adapting anything whatever <laughs> it shouldn't have been an original screenplay to begin with but it didn't even take home that award uh, because that ended up going to Cord Jefferson for American Fiction which was one of the happy surprises of the night actually <laughs> not gonna lie after having seen American Fiction recently and I may or may not be featuring it in an upcoming what I've been watching after having seen the film Finally, I can say with quite a bit of confidence that the writing and directing in that film was mwah, magnifique. That film was written incredibly well by Cord Jefferson. And so even though it came out of left field for me, I was genuinely so, so happy to see that he won that award. It was clearly a surprise for him as well because he was also another winner that was absolutely flummoxed on the stage. <laughs> but he did make some good points about Hollywood's bloated budgets, you know, $200 million for all of these films. And that's crazy. And maybe just make some $20 million films. Like he had some really good points in there. But overall, it really was a shock and a happy one at that. But going back to Barbie for a second, at least it didn't go home completely empty handed because Billie Eilish and Phineas did end up taking home the award for best song uh, with What Was I Made For? And that actually makes Billie Eilish the youngest person to win two Oscars at the ripe old age of 22. <laughs> 22 years old and this girl has achieved so much that is so phenomenal although I will say even though what was I made for won the award for best song I would say the award for best performance would go to Ryan Gosling for I'm just kidding <laughs> and the last category for today's video is best animated feature which <laughs> again last night oh last night was tough for me boy uh best animated feature ended up going to the boy and the heron boo many of you will know how much of a fervent spider-verse fan i am guys i don't play when it comes to spider-verse okay it's one of my favorite things of all time so yeah last night was a disappointment but I wasn't too heartbroken, especially considering the fact that one, apparently The Boy in the Heron is Miyazaki's final film, allegedly, although apparently he's retired a, a bunch of times and he's still kicking, so like, who knows? Uh, but if it is gonna be his last film, then fair enough. Winning the Oscar when you go out, like, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. But two, uh, Spider-Verse already won the Academy Award for the first film, so I guess I can't be like too upset. I feel like because the fandom, the fan base for the Spider-Verse first films have gotten so much bigger people discovered the first film on streaming they showed up in droves for the uh, theatrical release of the second film and it made huge box office money so now it doesn't seem like the underdog that it once was when the first film came out and underperformed at the box office and so I feel like maybe a lot of the voters were like oh we don't really want to vote for Spider-Verse because they've already got the award let's give it to Miyazaki instead and like oh, I hate it because Spider-Verse is clearly the superior film just in terms of technical craftsmanship. But if that's the politics that they want to go by, like, what can I do? I, what can, I have no power. I have no say in this. Christopher Nolan won everything last night. Like, my word means nothing. <laughs> but thank you for watching this video. <laughs> and now that I told you guys my thoughts on last night's 96th Academy Awards, it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of the awards ceremony and the winners and losers of the night down in the comments below. Please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up, including that what I've been watching that I mentioned earlier. But in the meantime, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.